But I want you to open your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. And I want us to look here and we know that this is uh, in Ezekiel. He is dealing with, uh, in fact, verse 30 or chapter 36 through 39. All of that's about Egypt becoming a nation. And, of course, they did, amen, everything God said came to pass. But in Ezekiel 37, we see this, uh, uh, we see the Lord giving us the account of him sending his man down to a strange place. And I want us to read about it, if we can, in verse 37. The Bible, or chapter 37, verse 1. The Bible says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out uh, in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of, dry, of, of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. By, that's, by the way, that's a good thing to always do. He said, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Lord, help us tonight. Lord, I, I, we've already heard such good preaching. And Lord, the singing, God, what a blessing. I mean, the choir, the preacher's family, and that dear young lady, Lord, that got up and blessed us all. And Lord, I just pray now, though, Lord, take, Lord, my, my word, take what you've given me. But Lord, would you touch the heart of your people with it? And God, let us see, God, if you can raise up, Lord, a bunch of dry bones, God, into an exceeding great army. What in the world? God, can you do with us? Please have your way now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. Well, uh, as we look right here, it's just uh, I want to give you a few just simple thoughts. In fact, I usually when I preach, I don't give anything more than simple thoughts, all right? And uh, there are preachers that are deep sea divers. I mean, buddy, preacher, they, 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 they hunker in there, put the suit on, and dive down deep. I'm not like that. I take that rock, and I throw it across the top of the water, and it just skims across the top there, amen? And, uh, but I, I'm trusting that, that we'll see something here. And, uh, you know, the Lord put Ezekiel in a very, very hard place. You would think, oh, now, now, I don't know if I could handle this. And I don't know what Ezekiel thought when the Lord first did what he did. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out into the spirit, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley. Now, y'all, we know what mountains are and valleys, but imagine the Lord, first thing he does, first ministry he has is he puts him down in a valley. And then the Bible says, not just a valley, but a valley which was full of bones. And we read about those bones. He said they were very many and they were very dry. Now, I found this. I found that I, I wish it was so. Now, I, I would guess if he's in a valley of bones that uh, these bones laying there, there was not always that way. There was a time, I mean, when those bones were people, amen. I mean, buddy, they were alive and thriving. And I mean, good thing they were living their life and God was blessing and a lot of great things going on. But now there's a valley of dry bones laying down there. And I just say this, sometimes God puts you in that valley of dry bones. Now, it could be he places you there to begin with. Sometimes uh, we've been in that land of the living and doing real good, and God's been blessed and had his hand on everybody, and, and then he sends us to walk down that valley. 
Now, I, I love, now you read that right there about looking in that valley and them dry bones. I met some preachers that said, hey, I pastor that church. <laughs> I know that church right there. Amen. I, I, I'm very familiar with that. Hey, but sometimes the preacher feels like he's down there. I, I wish it was so that all the time that uh, it was like a manual. Amen. I wish Heritage Baptist Church was like a manual all the time. I mean, because you, everybody you talk to gets saved, and they all come to church, and they all join, and they all get baptized, and they all are faithful. They all tithe, and that way it happens around here. <laughs> Well, y'all looking at me real strange, amen. I, and by the way, they all stay. Nobody ever leaves. They're all happy. <laughs> You're like, yeah, wait a minute now, amen. Now, ain't that the way it happens up in Kentucky? It ain't that way in Georgia, I'll tell you that. You know what? I We're changing the name of our church from Heritage Baptist Church. I'm going to name it Revolving Door Baptist Church, amen. <laughs> and uh, hey, I've been down there now 23 years. I'm successfully building about five churches around me, amen. <laughs> And, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, doing a good job of it. You pray for me, amen. I want to keep it up, amen. Uh, but, hey, sometimes it gets that way. Evangelist, hey, have you ever had the meetings dry up? The preacher didn't call. You don't know. You're like, well, I, I thought I was going. To, you, you know, that, that one you're always at every year. And you, you hey, preacher, well, I'm just checking on the date. And, well, we didn't schedule you this year, brother. Missionary, how about the support? You ever had the support dry up? Preacher, the, the, the amens dry up. People come to the altar sometimes dries up. And, and what, was, what I see right here, with uh, it's a picture. I, uh, number one, the reckoning of a hopeless situation. I, I can see Ezekiel. Ezekiel looks around and says, man, these are, I'm in a valley. It's a bunch of bones. Uh, I mean, it looks, it looks hopeless to me. I, I'm helpless to do anything. I don't know what I'm going to do. Have you ever been there? <laughs> Have you ever? By the way, your marriage, when you get married, you don't think about that. When you walk down that aisle, that husband and wife, you know how they do. And uh, preacher, we stand up here, and boy, here they come. I mean, uh, uh, the, the boy, the toe-headed boy comes out there, <laughs> you know, and he's all standing there waiting, and then here they open the door, and here comes the girl. Woo! He's like Jerry Clower. Ha! Oh, ha! Woo! He's shouting the victory. Here she comes down there. Boy, they, they're down there. They say their vows I do. They don't know y'all are here. Then they're just getting married. They're just like, it's all about him and it's all about her. And, and I mean, that's the way it ought to be. Say amen. And oh, boy, they don't know. That whole time they dated, they didn't hardly argue because he ain't going to ever say anything he might want to upset that dear girl with. He would not never rile her up like that. Oh, no. He's trying to catch that girl. Amen. And uh, oh, and uh, by the way, and she never let him see then that she didn't just look like decked out ten, uh, 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 a 12 on a 10 scale. I'm talking about got the makeup on, the hair's done. You know, she finds out he's coming over early. She does all that like at 3 o'clock in the morning. And he, he comes over there and he's like, whoa, man, I mean, this is a pretty girl right here. And they get married and everything's good. And boy, you think everything's going to always be like that. How about when the marriage dries up a little bit? How about when we ain't as close as we used to be? And hey, and now it ain't all about just him and it ain't all about just her. It gets a little bit about you and it gets a little bit about her and, and about a little selfish stuff going on. You see, it don't just happen over at the church, does it? It happens over at the house. It happens a lot of places. Uh, how about that good walk with God you have when you walk with God? And boy, when you, I remember when I first got saved, y'all. I, I, I was raised in a preacher. I, Brother Weaver, I listened to him preach, and I'm like, I identify. Man, I was raised in a drunkard's home, all the mess that goes along with it. They brought a church bus down to my house and picked me up, and I got saved by the grace of God. I mean, the look, by the way, my dad, my drunkard daddy got saved. We poured all the liquor out down there, Brother brother Rocky. I mean, poured every bit of it. God changed our life. It was all because Jesus passed by. Man, I tell you, we got in. When we got in, we got in. My dad, we didn't just go to one service. We went to all of them. I, I remember Wednesday night, the first Wednesday night, he said, hey, y'all get ready. And I'm like, where are we going to eat? <laughs> Daddy don't ever say get ready unless we're going to eat during the week, you know. And uh, by the way, I sure did like that parental uh, guidance uh, message that Brother Weaver brought in. <laughs> you know about that traveling. You know what my daddy used to do? Uh, we, we always, he, we'd get in, he'd say, oh, y'all got headaches, don't you? And I'm like, well, I didn't think I did. He like, yeah, y'all's heads hurting. Now. He more he talked, my head started hurting. He'd give us all Tylenols. 
we'd all go to sleep. And hey, well, not on purpose. He he was drugging us. I didn't even know it. <laughs> There's some good parental guidance right there. Amen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Uh, but I, I'm just telling you. But hey, I, when we got in church. Everything was great. Boy, we'd sit up on the front. Man, we, we, we just enjoyed every service. We went that first Wednesday night, and, and boy, it, it was preaching. I thought, what are they going to do? It was preaching, singing, and, and altar calls, and just like it was on Sunday morning, just like it was Sunday night. Man, when I got in my Bible, I, I tell you, I mean, I, I began to read my Bible. I read it every day. I just got saved. I mean, I mean, brother, I, there was meat in that Bible. There was milk in that Bible. It was everything I needed. And I found out, brother, everything I needed for my life was right there in that Word of God. I was just a teenager, but I tell you what, I was a reading my Bible. I was a praying, guys. I was getting on my knees and praying as a teenager. I know that. that ain't supposed, but I'm telling you, it was all good. Now, that's a good time when everything's alive like that. But what happens when your Bible reading's done got dry? Type boy, we went soul winning every week. Every Saturday preacher, we was there. We was going to be there with that preacher. What happens when your soul winning kind of dries up? I mean, I guess everybody comes soul winning, don't you? <laughs> hey, dry bones. And there were very many, and lo, they were very dry. And you see, when it begins to happen like that, and, and I don't care if it's in your ministry, I don't care if it's in your church, Brother, the, I, I like it when the families are coming. But hey, just as much as families come, families go. I feel like Peter. Remember Peter when he, he's on the boat and he's sinking and Jesus comes walking on the water and, and boy, he steps out there and he walks on the water. Then he's beginning to sink. <laughs> I think I've been, I've been pastoring these, uh, at that heritage all these years and I, 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 you know what I do? I walk a little while and I sink a little while. <laughs> and I walk a little while and I sink a little while. And I think, uh, I think Ezekiel's sitting there looking at that and he's like, oh Lord, uh, what am I going to do with these bones? Uh, by the way, we may be sitting here tonight in survival time. You know, what am I going to do with these bones? Am I going to have a few meetings? Are we going to have a few people preach and leave out of here and still be sitting in a valley of dry bones? Is that all God's got for me? Is that all God's going to do? Is that all that's going to be in my hand? Is That's the way my, my marriage is going to be? That's the way my family is going to be? That's the way my walk is going to be? No, it don't have to stay that way. I want to, I want to tell you what you need to do now. There's that reckoning of a helpless situation, but you know what you got to do first of all? Write this down. You got to remember the hand of God. Everybody look back in verse 1. The Bible says, uh, you got to remember it started off. He said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. When I look at that, there's some things when I, when the Lord helps me, whenever I, when it gets dry, and brother, when the times are dry, and I feel like the church is dry. And by the way, sometimes my church, it ain't that, oh, I tell you what, look at all them dry people. Hey, I find that when I got dry bones in the, in the pews, I'm probably spewing out a little bit of dust out of the pulpit. Now, not you fellas. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about, hey, you know, down in Georgia, you went to the preacher's meeting, y'all hear about that? Went to the one at one of them died. They called the paramedics, carried out five preachers before they found the right one. <laughs> That's down in Georgia now, down in Georgia, amen. Preacher was working on a sermon and his notes blew out the window. He had a farm down there and the milk cow ate his notes and the milk dried up. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, all right, that's a little bit, <laughs> that's some dry humor. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, that's, <laughs> sorry preacher, you brought me, hey amen. <laughs> now, <laughs> let me show you this right here. I, I, I think about this, if you go to thinking about where the Lord saved you, if you go to thinking about when God called you, Brother, all I got to do is I go to, I go to, I take my mind back to that night when the Lord came down and brother, he saved the old little bus kid. I was on my way to hell and didn't deserve anything. But brother, God had mercy and God reached down and hey, wherever you were, God did the same thing. We didn't deserve a lick of it, but God loved us and God reached out. God changed our lives. God made it different, amen. We're not who we used to be. We're not what we ought to be, but we're not what we're going to be, amen. The Lord did that. Hey, you take yourself back to that day or night when you got saved. Oh, you see why? There's life there. There's life there. That's where God 
breathe that spiritual life into you that day or night when you were born again. And you have the quickened. Quickened means to be made alive. That were dead in your trespasses and sins. But the Lord breathed life into you. You see, when I, and by the way, you look back at your life and you think about them times when like here where it said, it said the Lord's, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Oh, brother, you just preached on it, amen. I know whenever you're down and out, boy, God can come and he can lay his hand on you. I'll tell you something. There is nothing. I, I, I'll tell you, we were at the home of an old preacher in our community. He has preached over at McDonough Baptist Tabernacle for years, Brother West. Me and one of his old members, what happened is their church, that preacher was there for, I mean, he, he's up in his uh, upper 80s now. He's in hospice care, and we went over to see him and spent a little time with him right there around the, uh, right there around the bed. He can't get out of the bed. And uh, I just said, preacher, I said, uh, I said, you had got his wife and his kids in there. I said, preacher, I said, let's just talk a minute about how the Lord's used you. But we was talking about how God, how many all them people getting saved over there at that church and what God had done in that place. But I asked that, I said, oh, preacher. I said, there ain't nothing. He said, like, I said, like having that hand of God on you when you stand up and you preach and you know the Lord is preaching through you. Boy, that old man's, uh, that old man of God's lip began to quiver uh, and his tears began to, or his eyes began to wet up and, and he said, oh yes. And boy, his wife began to look and she said, he had no emotion. He's hardly been able to talk. He said, oh yes. He said, there's nothing like the hand of God on you, amen, when God's using you and preaching through you. And I mean, brother, those, those children began to weep. Uh, brother, we began to pray. But God, that old man of God I knew what it was to have the touch of God on him amen yeah. do you remember what it was like when God had his hand on you yeah. you preachers when you were preaching you Sunday school teachers you ever had God's hand on you while you was teaching you singers I, boy, I heard it tonight but have you ever had God's hand on you while you was teaching you go, oh preacher, I, I, it's not always that way. Sometimes I, I feel like that old singing's dry. I feel like that teaching's dry. I feel like that uh, preaching's dry. Hey, remember when the, hand, the Lord had his hand on you and hey, he can have it on you again. Yeah. Uh, you see, you got to remember, hey, that divine presence. And then this, remember God's divine power. He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. There's a, I, you know what it is to do whatever it is you're doing and do it in your own power. Now listen to me now. Hey, the, the disciples went out fishing all night. Remember when they backslid, got on that boat with Peter, they went out fishing all night and they caught what? Nothing. By the way, you can fish all you want. You ain't got God on you, you ain't gonna catch nothing. The preaching ain't going to be nothing. The teaching ain't going to be nothing. The soul winning ain't going to be nothing. But you let God fill you. You get empty of yourself and let the Lord fill you again. Hey, the Lord can fill you and you can have his spirit on you like you used to have it, amen. amen. Ezekiel right there, he said, I imagine he thought, man, I, I know when I started this thing, I mean, man, God carried me in the spirit. The Lord put me out there. And then I see this. How about this? You better remember this. It says that, he set me down in the midst of the valley. You better remember God's divine placement. Been here 23 years again at my church. How long you been here, preacher? We about the same. So the Lord put us here to pastor this church while people are coming. But if they go to leaving, God's done with us. I mean, while the offerings are good, boy, God's in it. But oh, the offerings dry up. You know, the Lord, I don't think God can do anything else with me here. Now, I didn't think when God, God sent you to a place, I, I didn't think that he just, you know, if we're not careful, hey, now, now you young preachers, I don't know what God's going to do with you. And I don't know if you'll be a missionary, an evangelist, a pastor. I know about pastoring because that's my heart and that's what God sent me to do. And so I, I, I'm grateful for that. I was under one of the best men of God there's ever been. My pastor preacher more. And maybe that's where the Lord did that. Maybe that's how God knit that in my heart. I have no idea. But I know this. I've only been in two churches in my life. And that's the church I got saved in. It's the church I'm pastoring now. Now I'm not get here. All you, if, if a fellow's like, well, I went here. Went there, that's, that's, I'm just saying. But when I came there, 
Here's what I did. I, I was not one of these young men that are like, well, I tell you what, I'll go someplace, but I want the package. <laughs> I got to have the package. You know what I mean by that? It's like these young married couples that they want your house, preacher. They, they want all the things. They want that Corvette. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> hey, they want it now. Well, I want to go someplace and I want them to pay me full time and I want benefits and they better do this and they better do that because if they don't, it's not the will of God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you just say? Right. So you want it easy. Yeah. Hey, you don't want any adversity. I want non-adversity Baptist church. <laughs> there ain't no such thing. There ain't no such thing. I want, I want the non-adversity mission field. There ain't no such thing. Well, I want to be an evangelist, but I, I just want, uh, almost like when you go buy somebody's accounts, if you ever cut grass, I cut grass on the side. And it, I'm not just bi-vocational, I'm like tri-vocational, all right? I, but I, I'll cut grass and every once in a while somebody sell their accounts. You know what? You, it's, like a, it's like an evangelist that says, well, I don't want to start off with nothing. I want some old preacher to give me all his churches and let me just preach in all his churches when he dies, you know? Like hand it to me. Y'all, I, I never seen it where God just handed it to anybody. In fact, what I see is, is you have to remember, God, you put me where you put me. And by the way, if God puts you in a church, fellas, that church is not a stepping stone until you find something better. You see, that's where God puts you in. If God puts you there, uh, brother, that's God's house and God's people. And, and it don't matter, brother. Hey, I, when I came, I mean, man, we had a little group of just a handful of little people down there. And hey, and, and, it, and it comes and goes and people have come in. But I mean, I mean, mess of people saved now and a lot of people now and a lot of things now. And people say, oh, and, and I want that church now. I, I, oh, I'm going to go there and I'll, I'll follow you, brother Hopkins, now. Well, you didn't, you weren't there whenever, uh, I mean, you know, I didn't, when they asked me about what they was paying, I said, I ain't going to talk to you about it. Whoa, whoa, you didn't ask them how much they were going to give you? No, they, want, they brought it up, and I said, I ain't going to, I said, we're going to find out if I need to be here, if God wants me here, and if y'all, if God wants y'all to call me, and if I need to be here. And if he wants me to come here, then God will take care of it. Right. Right. Well, well, you didn't know, you didn't get to put it in writing, and you... <laughs> Y'all, have my people just have big X and little X. <laughs> you gonna put that thing in writing? There's this thing about, hey, there's this thing about God just sending you where he wants you to go. There's that thing about just saying, Lord, here am I. Send me. And God, I, hey, and by the way, there's nothing after that. It's just whatever, wherever, whenever, I'll be your man, I'll be your servant. God, if you're willing to use somebody like me, I'll go wherever. And Lord, I'll stay. God, I'll stay there because that's where you sent me. By the way, I think it's as important for a preacher to stay where God put him as it is for a member to stay. When God, well, things get a little rough, I'll just go to another church. You ain't got no right to leave your church when God puts you there. You see, you know why I can't leave Heritage Preacher? It's because the last orders I got from God was the Holy Ghost of God telling me, you pastor Heritage Baptist Church. Brother Rocky, the last orders on that, on that end of, of doing that was the Lord telling me, you go to Heritage Baptist Church. I, I, when I, people, oh, Brother, Brother Hopkins, you, you, maybe we ought to send you here. You ought to do this. You, no, 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 no. I don't hear. Because of that, because me and the Lord settled that a long time ago. I hear, I don't write a resignation letter every Monday. <laughs> now, come on. Hey, I don't come to a preacher's meeting and cry on all the preachers about how bad it is at my church. I'm, it's the other way, y'all. I can't believe that God lets somebody like me pastor that church. Are y'all listening to me? You see, and, and let, let, that, that gets me into the, the next thing. You got to remain a humble servant. Or you already hit on it, preacher. I don't got to preach much on that. The Lord asked him, he said, can these bones live? If it would have been the modern day pastor, he'd have said, yeah, if you put me in that church, I can build anything. That's right. All they need is me. Because, boy, I tell you, I got all the answers. I got all the answers for, all, for, for this church and any other. Hey, I need to write a few books on it, amen, and tell y'all how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be probably after my other book, you know, the, the Ten Most Humble Men in America and How I Met the Other Nine. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be a good one too, wouldn't it? Amen. Can I tell you something? Hey, that's like the evangelist. It's like, well, that's right. Can these bones live, evangelist? Yeah, you get me over there at that church, I'll bring revival. That's what I do. I take revival wherever I go. I didn't think it was about the evangelist. I didn't think it was about the pastor. Well, I tell you, you just put me in any field. I'm a missionary. Boy, I tell you what, I'm that kind of missionary where I'll do it anywhere. And I, I'll, I can do it because I'm the best missionary there is. In fact, if you other missionaries won't know how to do it, y'all just come over here. Well, Ezekiel didn't say that. Can these bones live? He gave the wisest answer he could have ever given. Oh, Lord, thou knowest. You know, I think if he would have answered and been honest, he just said, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't see how it can be done. Look up here, not with me. And you know, maybe the Lord agreed. Maybe the Lord looked down and said, Ezekiel, man, that's the smartest thing you've said all day. You mean you realize and again, hey, fellas, y'all remember when we started out and we really didn't know, we didn't, hey, we didn't know anything. And we didn't know anybody. All we knew was we were saved and we were called and God Almighty was putting us, uh, hey, we, we couldn't get over that God was, hey, I, or I, couldn't, I couldn't get over that God called me to preach. The drunkard's kid now, call the preacher's kid, call the deacon's kid, but hey, I ain't ever felt worthy. I mean, I, I mean just as a teenager, the, I mean, all, I, all I can say is I never have felt like that's right. That's right, Lord, you got something when you got me. It was the other way around. I battled with God. You got nothing. And God, how can, how can you use nothing to do anything? If I'm a nothing, how? And, and, and you know, I found out <laughs> that that's the only way God can use anybody. Oh, Lord, thou knowest. Lord, I want to be good if we, if you, t Sunday school teacher, if you said, told the Lord, Lord, I can't teach this class. Not without you. Fellas, what if we said, I can't pastor my church. I can't guide these people, Lord, without you. I can't build, I can't, I can't build a, a work on the mission field and win souls and, and start churches. I can't do it without you. See, oh Lord, thou knowest. I remember the first day I came to work as an assistant pastor. Now, I couldn't believe that either. I was like, my pastor's like, Brother Cheryl, we want you to come on. And I'm like, you mean come on like I need to do more? I, he said, no, no, I want you to come on like and work here. And I was like, ah. I went out squalling, went and told Melissa. She's like, no, oh, preacher more don't know what he's doing. <laughs> your, your wife doesn't know how to encourage you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I can't tell at all. I just remember when people come visit the church. Our church was so little, we didn't have any ministries. I mean, for nothing and nobody. And, uh, my, and, and a good family would come. And they had visited another good church in the community. I told my wife, uh, I, said, she, I said, well, they visited so-and-so, but they, they came visit us today. She said, why they come here? <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> that really helps. Amen. Amen. You preach it wise, they're like, I like her, and I don't even know her. Amen. Can I just say this? Hey, get back. What if we got back to that place where we, we were when we started, when it's like, God, if it gets done, you're going to do it. And God, if anybody gets saved, I can't win them, but you can. And Lord, I, I can't help these families, but God, you can. And God, I can't help these teenagers, but God, you can. And God, I can't help these uh, seniors, but God, you can. And I can't do this, but God, you can. Uh, Lord, oh, thou knowest, amen. But I tell you what, if you remember, what that, you remember the Lord's hand and you remain a humble servant, I want to tell you what God can do if you'll let him. By the way, that's the same way. That, let me jump back to that marriage. That marriage, it used to be it was all about the other one. But in a marriage, we get selfish. We get mad at the other one because they don't, they don't meet all our needs like it's all about us. My goodness. And then all of a sudden, you know what? When revival comes, whenever th that man says, it ain't about me. Lord, first it's about you. And then it's about that lady right there. And that lady says, Lord, it ain't about me. It's about you. And then it's about that man that you gave me. And all of a sudden, God begins to work a miracle. <laughs> In that family, and God begins to bring something back together that was, hey, very, very, there were very many, and they were very dry. 
They were dry. They were dead. They were divided. They were all falling apart. And I'm just saying, when I, when I see all that, what did the Lord say to do? Last thing, I just, I'll, I'll just give you something simple here. If I can find it. You got to, what we need is what God gave them. Everybody look with me right here and let's look at it again. The Lord told him to preach to him. Now, I just say this. You say, well, I don't know what to do when everything's dead. I don't know what everything. Why don't we just do what God commands us to do? Because all it, all, it, all it said, that's all he did. All, he did, all he, he did on his part is when the Lord said do it, he did it. What if we got back to reading our Bible? What if we got back to praying? Uh, what if we got back to soul winning? What if we got back to preaching men? I mean, in studying the Word of God and being that man of God that God wants us to be, realizing it's not us at all, but it's all God, amen. And we're asking God, God, I, I'll just do what you told me to do. Lord, I'm willing to do that. Are you willing to do that? It's, it's, it's first night. I don't know what all God's going to give you tomorrow and Sunday. I mean, it's only a few days revival. It want to be good if on the first night we got to that place where we'd say, Lord, uh, if, we're gonna, if anything's going to happen around here, Lord, then you know what we've got to have? It's a revival of holy breath. It's a revival of holy breath. When I see what happened, he preached. And, the, and, and by the way, I love this now. <laughs> this will help you. The Bible says there was a noise. Yeah. Yeah. Now, y'all, I'm just telling you, when, when, when things go to moving again, there's a little noise starts taking place. Church has been dead. Church has been dry. Nobody going to the altar. Nobody getting saved. Baptism of pool has plants growing in it. I mean, buddy, it's been so long since somebody got baptized. And I, oh, brother, it's just sad. And we're all, oh, what are we going to do? But the man of God says, Lord, I'm going to get with you. I'm going to get humble. I'm going to get back in that place. And I'm just going to do what you called me to do. And I'll get filled with God. And I'll stand and preach. And all of a sudden, there's a noise. Old sister so-and-so that ain't made a holy grunt in five years says, oh, people start saying amen. See, it says there was a noise and then there was a shaking. That means people started moving. All of a sudden, people start frequenting that altar again. Let me help you now. Now, down in Georgia, I tell my crowd, they're not spiritual enough to never go to the altar. <laughs> And I, I know, I got that old lady that says, well, I can't go, preacher, because I can't kneel down. Same lady I see on that fourth shelf over there at Walmart getting something off of there. But, I, <laughs> but you know what happens? The Holy Ghost begins to touch hearts again and people sitting here and yonder. All of a sudden they get up and they go to moving again back down to the altar. They start saying Amen. Tears come out of dry eyes that hadn't had a tear run down it, I mean, in ages. And all of a sudden, God tenders that old hard heart. Remember that old dry heart, that dead heart? You know, that heart that we come in church and we put it on real good, but inside, man, cold, dusty, dry. But all of a sudden, buddy, God's filling it with something. And he fills it so much, it just pours out right here. And all of a sudden, hey, we can't help it. Brother, I, I, we can't help it. We're all of a sudden, we're in the presence of God. And there's a shaking and a moving. And, and you know what? And all that, and any division that's happened because of that, and it always does. Uh, if you read that, it tells me, it said the bone started coming together. Bone to his bone. Almost like God repaired the old division that the devil had caused. And all of a sudden, hey, now all of a sudden that division in the home, that division at the house of God, that division in your own heart, the Lord begins working. There's a noise and there's a shaking. And, and, and you know what? The Lord, hey, I mean, it comes together. It's kind of weird. It's like it all comes together and there's a skeleton laying there. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's better than a bunch of just bones all separated everywhere. Then there's a corpse laying there if you read it further. <laughs> you know, it's like there ain't no breath in it, but there's a body laying there. And so what does he say to do? He says, just keep preaching. He said, now this time you preach to the winds, amen. By the way, the preacher, remember that old dry preaching he was doing? I wonder if now he's not like, uh, oh, wind, I, I tell you, you need to come on down. I, I mean, hacking, amen. I mean, if you're hacking, God's in it, amen. I'm just saying. Hey. But all of a sudden, hey, the, hey, that wind began to blow and breath came into, and the Bible says they rose up an exceeding great army. Preacher, you know what we need tonight? Let me, let me say it different. 
do you know what I need tonight? I need the Lord again. To say, on me. Preacher, you need the Lord to blow his breath into you again. Church, you need the Lord to put his breath on you. Young people, well, God helps at camp. Is camp the only place God can blow his breath? No, he can do it right up here in your church. Why don't you bow your head and close your eyes? Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.